In this video, I want to talk about parametric equations. And then at the end, we're actually going to introduce the trig functions in terms of parametric e equations. But anyway, uh, parametric equations is, is when you introduce a, a, a third variable, t, uh, called the parameter, and you express x and y in terms of t. And you do this oftentimes in physics, when we're talking about t being time. And that's not a bad way to think of it. Think of it as t being the time at which you're at a certain point. But anyway, you can generate some x and y coordinates by picking values of t. If t is 0, x is 1, y is negative 3. If t is 1, x is 2, y is negative 1, and so on. So we get these points, and, the, and we could plot these points. Let's see, 1, negative 3, uh, 2, negative 1, 3, 1, 4, 3, 5, 5. Looks like a line segment. So it's a line segment that looks kind of like this. Let's say you wanted to find the equation of that line segment in, in terms of x and y. Okay, that's called eliminating the parameter. Uh, there's different ways to do it, but we're trying to get rid of t. In this particular case, it's not too hard. You could solve the first equation for t. Whoops. t equals x minus 1. And then you could plug that t into the second equation. y equals 2 times t. So 2 parentheses x minus 1 minus 3 y equals 2x minus 5 for 1 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 5. So when you're asked to parameterize a curve, that just means find parametric equations for the curve. Now if you have a function, it's easy. You can let x equal t always. And then y could be four, uh, f of x, which would be 4 minus t squared. Uh, 0 is less than or equal to t is less than or equal to 2. So what, what would the graph look like? t equals 0, you're at the point 0, 4. And as t gets closer and closer to 2, you're sliding down the parabola. At t equal 2, you're at the point 2, 0. But see, there's other ways to parameterize the same curve. Suppose I let um, x equal 2 minus t, and let y equal 4 minus 2 minus t squared. For 0 is less than or equal to t, less than or equal to 2. Can you see what that would look like? Notice in this case, at t equals 0, you start off at the point 2, 0. And as t gets closer and closer to 2, you're actually moving up the parabola. At t equal 2, you end up at 0, 4. So sometimes it might be helpful to parameterize curves going different directions. Another advantage is, if you want to parameterize uh, a curve that's not a function, you, you might let, uh, in some cases, you let y equal t, and then x would be the uh, t squared minus t. So t goes between negative 4 and 4. Okay, why don't you try one? See if you can uh, parameterize this uh, line segment from a to b. Okay, hit the pause button. Okay, this one's kind of tricky, actually. Uh, x isn't too bad. When x is 0, or I should say when t is 0, x is 1. When t is 4, x is 5. Good. And when t is 0, y is 2. But notice, when t equals 4, you want y to be 8. So when you plug in t, 4 for t, you want the total sum to be 8. So you'd have to have a 6 4, so 3 halves there, to get 8 when t equals 4. Kind of sneaky, huh? Anyway, why don't you, uh, why don't you try this next one? See if you can... Uh, parameterize the curve going from B to A now. Again, it's not that easy. The X is, isn't too bad, but the Y is the hard part. Remember, when T equals 4, you have to be back at 2. So when you plug in 4 for T, you want the Y coordinate to be 2. So the coefficient of T has to be 3 halves or 6 fourths. Okay, look at this problem. Uh, you got two cars that are approaching an intersection. And so car A is 10 miles north, and it's traveling south at 25 miles per hour. So car A starts off north, it's, it's going to do south 25 miles per hour. And so the question is, what would be the parametric equations for, for, for car A? See if you can do that. Well notice the x-coordinate is always zero, and then the y-coordinate starts out to be 10 miles, but if you're traveling 25 miles per hour, if the velocity is 25, then you would subtract 25t from, t, from 10. So then meanwhile you have car B that's 8 miles east, and it's traveling towards the intersection as well. So it's moving along the x-axis like this. So can, can you find the parametric equations for car, for car b? Okay, so I get uh, 8 minus 20t for x. Now notice the y-coordinate is always 0. 
Okay, the question then is, do the cars collide? Which means, do they actually uh, hit at the intersection? How would you do that? Well, you could see uh, uh, at what time they reach the intersection. Now, notice for car A, X is always zero. So if you set the Y coordinate of car A equal to zero, you get that car A hits the intersection at two-fifths hour. Then you, then you set the X coordinate of car B equal to zero, because the Y coordinate is always zero. And, and lo and behold, you find that it reaches the intersection at exactly the same time. So the answer to the question is yes. The next question is, do they have insurance, I guess? Okay, we'll get to... Uh, trigonometric functions in just a second, but let's do one more. This is an especially painful uh, word problem, especially since the Seahawks just lost, but you have a football that's kicked from a point 90 feet away from the goal post that's 10 feet high, and we're assuming that the ball is kicked so it hits the middle of the goal, goal post, so it's, it's on line. The, uh, the, and the origin would be uh, where the ball is being kicked, uh, and here, here become the parametric equations for the, for the football as it's headed towards the goal post. So the picture looks kind of like this. Uh, the football's 90 feet away from the goal post, and so at any particular point here, think of this as x, y, x, comma, y, this, this gives the position of the football. And the question, what is the question here? Oh, I see, the question is, does the kicker, what, the Falcons kicker? Do we have to really rub it in that bad? Come on, just say kicker. Does the kicker make the field goal? So how would you do that? How would you answer this question? Think about it. Okay, so you set the x-coordinate equal to 90 feet, and then once you find the value of t, you could plug that into y. And so if you do that, you get x equal 20, 20t equals 90, which means t equals 4.5 seconds. And then you, when you plug 4.5 in for y in the y-coordinate, well, I think you know what happened. Okay, we're finally ready to define the trigonometric functions. And we're going to use the unit circle for that, x squared plus y squared equals 1. And it's kind of strange how we do it, I guess. We always start at the point 1, 0, and we move counterclockwise. Uh, let's say we're on the unit circle and we move counterclockwise. Let's say we go a distance of t units along the edge here. This distance right here is t. Then we end up at a point x comma y, right? Well, we define the x-coordinate to be the cosine of t, and the y-coordinate to be the sine of t. Okay, now, one, one thing we need to talk about right right away with, uh, with the unit circle is what is the circumference of the unit circle? Remember, the circumference of the unit circle is the uh, distance around. So the, the circumference of any circle is 2 pi r, so the distance all the way around the unit circle would be 2 pi, right? So what would the distance of half the unit circle if you go over, if the whole distance is 2 pi, then half the unit circle would be just, it would just be pi, wouldn't it? And a quarter of the unit circle would be pi over 2. So this is what I'm saying. Suppose we start at 1, 0. We always start at 1, one 0. And we go a distance of pi over 2. From here to here is pi over 2. So, the question is, what would be the x-coordinate of this point? Well, the x-coordinate is 0. That's the cosine. The y-coordinate is um, 1, that's the sine of pi over 2. We actually say uh, cosine of pi over 2 equals 0. That's the x-coordinate. You see how it works? Now let's say, um, let's say you go uh, halfway around. So from here to here, this distance, remember, is pi. And so the point where you end up is right here. So what is the cosine of pi? Negative 1. What's the sine of pi? Zero. That's how it works. Um, let's see. What if you go um, three-fourths way around? So let's see. Let's say you go from here. Start at one zero, always. You go counterclockwise. If you go three-fourths the way around, you end up here. This would be three pi over two. So what's the cosine of three pi over two? It would be zero. What's the sine? Negative one. All right, now if you go all the way around, then uh, notice you get back to where you started. So the, uh, the cosine of uh, 2 pi the, is, is 1, the sine is 0. By the way, what, what is the cosine of 0? Cosine of 0, that means you don't really go anywhere. You just start right here. Cosine of 0 is 1, sine of 0 is 0. Anyway, that's how we're going to do it. We'll talk more about this in class. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.